Prohibition Partners TV with Lindsay Hooper. Hello again. Prohibition Partners have been making and releasing some videos in the lead up to the flagship event in June on the 22nd and 23rd, Prohibition Partners Live. We do hope that you can join us. This gives you a little insight into what you can expect at the two-day event. And one of the biggest concerns has been medicinal use of cannabis. We've had lots of inquiries about that and the benefits, and I've got the perfect person to speak to about it. Tracy uh, is going to join us all the way from LA. Tracy Ryan, who's the CEO of Can kids thank you very much for joining us thank you for having me nice to see you today yes i know it's early for you tracy and uh, getting towards the end of the day for us here in the uk uh, could you let us know about canna kids and how that came about the journey i know it's been quite one for you absolutely my daughter sophie was originally diagnosed at eight and a half months old and she had a low-grade brain tumor, which, as you can imagine, was absolutely terrifying for her father and I. It was through this chain of events on social media that we were connected with uh, Rick, Ricky Lake, who is a film star and talk show host here in the United States. And her and her production partner, Abby Epstein, had been working on a documentary called Weed the People, which is now on Netflix and came out in April 2018. And it was these women who originally brought cannabis to us and let us know that there was some real medicinal properties to it. So at nine months old, Sophie took her first dose of cannabis on camera. And this camera crew followed us for six years uh, to, doc to document our, our journey in our life. And it was through understanding the real benefits of cannabis not just seeing it in our own daughter, but also through this secret Facebook page that we had created called Canna Kids, that we really decided that there was so much more to this plant that we really wanted to uncover. So that's how Canna Kids originally started. We have worked with thousands and thousands of patients all over California. We have consulted tens of thousands more around the world. And we are now, uh, we've now rebranded our company and we're called CK Soul so that we can offer our medicinal products to patients of all ages without having the issue with the name now Canna Kids in this new legal climate and also just so that everyone knows that our products are for everyone. But it's been through this journey that's really led us to the science that we're now doing, the understanding of the plant, the nurses that we're working with, and that's really helped us understand how different profiles uh, affect different conditions and why. I asked you to do the impossible there but to sort of sum up your journey because obviously it's been years and years in coming, but you did brilliantly there to let us know exactly where you are at right now. Um, just talking about that initial opportunity that you had via Ricky Lake, who we were all aware of, global superstar. Um, I just wondered what the opportunities were to access cannabis if you'd have been looking at that time. You know, it was definitely a very different time that many years ago. That's been, gosh, seven years ago now. It's crazy how time flies. And in those days, dispensaries were, you know, pretty illegal. Um, there was a, it was a really hard time finding lab tested products. It wasn't, you know, tinctures weren't plentiful there. You couldn't find tinctures in dispensaries at that time. It was really more recreational, but luckily through Ricky and Abby, they already had resources that they tapped us into. And at that time we, we started on the very, very thick FICO oil. And it was crazy in those days, you had to have a diamond scale and wax paper and you had to measure it out on this diamond scale and, and get the dose just right. And you're working with a super, super concentrated oil that's extremely high potency. So it was very tricky and cumbersome, but it worked. And we can't even imagine where we would be today had we not used medical cannabis on Sophie, both for tumor shrinkage, which we now truly believe um, because of our research, we truly believe that it, it did help with the tumor shrinkage, as did the doctors in that time, but also the immunological response that this child had at such a young age, all the way up until now, you know, seven and a half years old, it's been really profound. We have spoken to Vera Toomey as well, um, who had her own case, and that was to do with seizures helping her daughter with epilepsy. So it's interesting that there's this other medical area. I mean, what do you think have been the main breakthroughs medicinally over those seven years that you've been involved? It's been incredible. I mean, to look at how far the medicine has come today since where it was all the way back then, we didn't really understand what cannabis was doing for patients. And we didn't really understand all of the conditions that could be so incredible for. And over the years, we've watched so many trials with autism come up. Um, we've got a, a line that we've designed just for autism and ADHD because we have seen 
it be so profoundly impactful in these children and adults that, that also suffer from this. Epilepsy specifically has come so far. Our own daughter is uh, told by her doctors and by her neuro neurological team to remain on cannabis for the epilepsy that she has due to where the tumor has affected her brain. And we know that we take Sophie off of, of her CBD and her THCA, which she's on now. And within you know less than 72 hours, she'll start having seizures on a daily basis. So to watch that, to see the efforts with PTSD, my, my dear friend, Dr. Sue Sicily has been doing incredible research with war vets and looking at how it's affecting them, how it's helping um, block bad memories, how it's helping with the PTSD flashbacks, MS, fibromyalgia, Parkinson's disease. We've all seen the viral videos of people smoking medical cannabis with Parkinson's and within 20 minutes, all their shakes just go away. It's, it's, it's profound what we continue to see evolve with this plant and all the different conditions it works for. It's clearly been very far reaching. What has the response been from medical professionals, from politicians that you've dealt with? That's a great question. And I'm really happy to answer that because the response that we have seen has been extraordinary. I mean, Sophie's Hospital alone, we my husband loves to wear his Canakich t-shirt around just because it will spark conversation. And how we have seen doctors except this plant seven years ago and then how they accept it today is so vastly different. It's become so commonplace for children to be taking this medicine, especially in Sophie's Hospital as well, but also just the other medical professionals around the country and also in DC. I've worked very closely with some incredible congressmen at the White House, um, Congressman Eric Swalwell in, in specific. He ran for president earlier this year and he got um, together with 31 different other congressional members from both sides of the aisle. They drafted a bipartisan letter to the AG uh, on my behalf to help us try and deschedule for research. And just the real, all the laws that are that they're looking at right now um, in order to make cannabis more accessible, to make banking easier, and also having deemed it necessary in the United States during the pandemic is a big step for us in a, in a really incredible way. What would be the single biggest thing that would help accelerate your mission right now? It would be descheduling for research, absolutely. We've got incredible clinical trials that we have going on currently with Dr. Anahi Jewett. And what we've had to do is we've tested the blood of patients who've been consuming our Canakids oils originally. Um, as we move forward with the trials, that will become CK Soul, our, our new line, which is almost identical to the last line. But um, we have uh, been able to, to actually bring those products into the lab so that we can test the full profiles would absolutely be way more easier. What we've had to do is we've kind of reverse engineered it by testing the blood and then by using synthetic cannabinoids that we have access to legally, like Win55, for example, that acts against the receptors like THC does so we can look at what is happening with the endocannabinoid system in response to um, how it's stimulating the immune system, but also all through synthetics right now, which has left us now having to create our own molecules that we're hoping will continue to stimulate the endocannabinoid system in the same way that cannabis does so that we can still continue to move forward rapidly because otherwise the to overcome the federal hurdles just to bring cannabis into the lab, it's, it's quite intensive. And a lot of people just don't ever get the licenses, even if they apply for them. It's fascinating work that you've been doing. How have you had time for all of this, Tracy? Well, when it's your kid, you make time. And, you know, with Sophie and with pediatric cancer at large, only 3.8% of all government funding goes to pediatric cancer research. And only four new drugs have been developed for children in the last 40 years. So there's a real sense of desperation here. And although Sophie's tumor has now been stable for over six months and we're confident that she's done with treatment, she had to endure treatment for six years. And another one of the children that I was able to um, secure brain tumor tissue and brain fluid from for our research, that little girl's been in treatment for 18 years for the same type of disease Sophie has. And there's also just no guarantee that at some point her tumor won't stop growing again. These kids, they need more help and they need more therapies. And we need non-toxic therapies for cancer, just period, for children and adults at large. So having to watch as much suffering as I have over the last six years, not only just in my own kid, but also in other children in the hospitals, but also the thousands of people that we've worked with watching 
people be, you know, be, people succumb to this disease, having to go to children's funerals. Like I've just had enough of it. So I make the time for it. It's become my passion. It's become my daily work. It has become my dream to try and find therapies for these patients that is going to, it's going to help them get better faster without also destroying the immune system that they so desperately need once they're off of treatment. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. And, and we're, we believe we're going to be pretty successful at it, which is exciting. It is super exciting. And we're so pleased to hear that Sophie is in a good place. We wish you every success uh, with the transition from Canna Kids into CK Soul as well. You're obviously pushing barriers and it's great to hear the work that you've been doing. And we look forward to hearing more at Prohibition Partners live at the, on the 22nd and 23rd of June. Thank you very much, Tracy Ryan, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. What a fascinating chat that was, and there is more to come. I know there's plenty of questions around medicinal use of cannabis. We can answer those. Make sure you get your early bird ticket. There isn't much time left. Go to prohibitionpartners.live to register, and we'll see you on the 22nd and 23rd of June. Be part of the conversation at Prohibition Partners Live, 22nd to 23rd of June, the premium online cannabis industry conference.